Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Alex, the Comic Quarter. Thank you so much for clicking play on this video. In this video, I talk about how I responded to a Facebook Marketplace ad for 12 old comic books. Now I got way more comic books and I also got other stuff. And in that other stuff was a holy grail. So hopefully you guys are excited. Here we go. This video is sponsored by the Shortbox app. It's the easiest and safest way to buy and sell graded comic books online. There's a link in the description below to download today for both Apple and Android users. Check it out and start shopping today. I really enjoy watching Bry's comics. He does a great job. He has great videos, great comic books, and great content. Recently, he did a video where he shared a story start to finish, and that's what I'm gonna do in this video. There's no part two, like he said in his video. There's not gonna be a, you know, stay tuned to the next video. I'm gonna show you guys the conversation I had, what I went in initially going to buy, and and then what I found in this collection, actually like several months later, got it graded and we'll see the results of it getting graded. So I'm really excited about this. Hopefully you guys enjoy this. If you can leave a thumbs up, if you're brand new to the channel, hit that subscription button, hit that bell to be notified when there's future videos. I responded to a Facebook marketplace ad where it said 12 old comic books. And I'm gonna show pictures and most likely I'll just do like voiceover for most of the video. And then we will show what I found and how I found it. There was another channel that actually tipped me off to this being such a holy grail. And then I researched more into this um, specific item and found out from other channels that this is, certainly is considered to be one of the holy grails of that hobby. So I was really excited about that. I went to Box Seat Cards and Collectibles in Champaign, Illinois. They sent it off to get graded for me. I don't know the grade. I'm really excited. I have a grade in my mind. I don't know much about grading this item and they are much more experienced and they graded it another grade. So we'll see who was right. Was I right? Or were they right? And then we'll also give associated grades. So let's start looking at the pictures and I'll do some voiceovers on what I saw, why I bought this lot, and then how I got the extra stuff in the lot too. The Facebook Marketplace ad was in a town about an hour south of where I live. It said 12 old comic books. And there's obviously, there's multiple pictures here. It had way more than 12, but as you can see, I was looking at that Bill West, which is a standard comic. And I kind of thought that might be an Alex Schomburg. There's a Mickey Mouse and the Looney Tunes, the Durango Kid. Then next up, you see, I saw the Annie Oakley. I saw another Bugs Bunny. I saw the Black Hawk, which is a DC comic. I saw the Pluto, the Tip Topper, and the Lone Ranger. And I thought the Lone Ranger covers are really cool because they're those really nice painted covers. And they're super underrated. You can get them for nothing. And they're just awesome covers. Then in this next picture, I saw Thrilling Comics, which is another standard comic book. And I knew that that was possibly an Alex Schomburg cover. I saw the Football Thrills, which is a Ziff Davis comic. And I thought that that might be a Norman Saunders cover. But then I saw all these treasure chests. And I was like, oh, this is going to be a lot of treasure chests. Obviously, I saw the Batman and the Superman. Still a lot more of these treasure chests. But then also on that top row, I saw Tales to Astonish pre-hero. Now, as you can see in this picture, looks incredibly bent in the bottom corner but I'm going to take the risk because that's a cool book you know probably even $30 in really low condition so I asked the lady if she had anything else and she responded that she had two like Ziploc bag gallon bags full of sports cards and celebrity cards, including like the Beatles. The listing for the comic books alone was just $50. And so I thought that was great. I asked how much more would you want for the cards? And she said $40 for all of them. And I said, well, I'll just do a, even $100. It was a porch pickup. So I'll just leave $100 and pick up the stuff that was left in a bag. So it was a great deal in here. The two pictures I got were first this picture of the Beatles cards. Just looks like two nice stacks of Beatles cards. And I know there's other celebrities cards in there as well and then I got this picture of the sports cards so I knew they were um, late 50s early 60s and so I thought that was a good bet maybe there's a mantle in there maybe there's a Jackie Robinson Willie Mays Hank Aaron something like that so I was pretty excited and I knew $40 was worth the risk you guys saw the comic books you guys saw the cards that was all the information I was given it was a pretty much a blind purchase except for the comic books and so the cards were just an extra $50 for me that I was going to bet on. Here's a sampling of what the baseball cards looked like. I just threw them all into these binders, these pages. That's what I did as a little kid. I know that's, you know, probably not the best thing. This one had like stickers on them. Some of them had stickers and there was like even extra stickers in um, in the, the Ziploc bags that I got. But I just threw them in here. I think those are like 1959, 60, something like that. This might be 1960 or 1961, 61 or 62 on those like wooden border ones. Then here you have the Beatles cards. And there was some, some celebrity cards down there. Pretty cool Beatles cards. 
um, from Hard Day's Night and maybe some other ones where they're colored here in the back, but nothing crazy. I mean, Beatles, Beatles memorabilia, there's so much printed that I don't think there's anything like crazy valuable unless you have like autographs of all of them or first print records or something like that. But yeah, pretty cool Beatles cards. And then in the football binder uh, is a much smaller collection of football cards, but this looks like it's 1956 or 57. I think it's 57. I was looking for like Johnny Unitas, um, Frank Gifford, cards like that. Um, then you get into these 1958 cards. Pretty cool. I love those. I kind of love how they all parallel the baseball cards. Tops kind of did, you know, similar styles of cards, but these are great. Love that oval um, border. And just those cards look so cool. Then you got some different cards down there at the bottom. I'm not quite sure what those are. Then this looks like maybe 1959-ish, maybe 1960. I'm, I can't remember. But either way, lots of just cool old vintage cards. So I've got those binders behind me. I, I have a lot of the books still in my collection. When you get a box of like treasure chests, it's just like not something that you're gonna get rid of. It's not something that you're gonna throw away. I can't even like put these in like, you know, extras and sales and stuff like that. There was a ton. I mean, I've got a full box of coverless comics. And um, let's see what that one is. There's that Bugs Bunny. There's that Bugs Bunny. Just, I mean, really beat up that old Santa Claus comic. I'm not even going to bag and board these things. Um, there's that Pluto. Pretty cool. I mean, that's the condition on these comic books. So at $50, you know, I got a couple cool ones. I straightened this one up pretty nicely. And it looks really, you know, much, much better. Thrilling Comics, Alex Schomburg cover. They're from probably the early, early 50s. Late 40s maybe even, but may, probably more like... 1950 and or 51 52 something like that i really like this tip topper it's in pretty rough condition uh, it's got that cut out annie oakley is pretty cool um that one is in half decent condition it just needs a pressing and a cleaning half decent condition for probably early 50s this bill west standard comics once again looks like it could be alex schomburg i'm not sure there's no um signature and i really don't care to look it up it's just so low grade and then football thrills which is ziff davis as you can see up top and so most likely a norm saunders cover which is a great great golden age artist for comics and pulps and then you've got these really cool lone ranger covers love this looks like 007 honestly maybe 007 got it from from this but yeah probably from the early 50s pretty rough condition but worth keeping it's i i find joy and looking at those so the story goes i really i was shopping these cards around like hey anyone interested in some old ball cards and beatles cards i will trade these for comics i'll sell this whole lot for like 100 bucks 150 bucks i don't care i just have I, I enjoy them i think they're really cool there's nothing crazy in there i was telling people there's no rookie cards in there there's no like hall of fame players there's some hall of fame players but nothing like crazy you know the cards i was looking for i was looking for um, Hank Aaron's, Willie Mays's. I was looking for Mickey Mantle's. I was looking for all those kind of cards. Bob Gibson's, Stan Musial's, stuff like that. There was nothing in this collection. Then I, I've been watching sports cards um, YouTube channels just for fun to branch out. And I love like sports card investment. There's a big channel like that. There's also Chasing Cardboard, who, who does like a vlog style or really documentary style videos. And I thought that was really entertaining. And one time he was looking at an original collection from an older gentleman. He was looking at all his old baseball cards that he bought in the 50s and all his old football cards that he bought in the 50s. And he came across a player that I'm familiar with and I knew it was in this collection, but I had no idea the significance of the card because I have not researched vintage football cards at all. And he came across Jimmy Brown, who is arguably one of the best football players in the history of football and definitely one of the best backs in football ever. Uh, one of the most dominating players. And he showed his rookie card. And I was like, that rookie card looks really familiar. I know I've got 58 tops football cards and i know i have a jimmy brown or a jim brown card let me see if that's the one that i have e even if it was like a 1959 1960 1961 those would still be worth finding i knew i had a jim brown but i didn't have like a frank gifford i didn't have a johnny unitas i didn't have those cards that i was you know kind of looking for in this collection but i knew i had this jim brown so sure enough i had a jim brown rookie card this is graded 
by PSA. It cost $55 to get this card graded because we did that certain tier where it'd get back, you know, not crazy, crazy walkthrough, but maybe standard or something like that. I don't know what, that's why I went to the experts. Joe and Jeremy there were fantastic. I went there and I got it graded and it's back now. So I have no idea what the grade is on this. So as I'm looking at this card, I'm not gonna take it out of the sleeve because I do not want to reveal the grade to myself. But as I'm looking at this card, I see it's off center left and right. And then top to bottom, there's a little bit more white on the bottom. There's a little bit more white on this side right here on the left side of the card. So I don't know if it's like off center left to right, top to bottom, whatever the terminology that they use. There's the back of the card. And then there is some creasing. There's some dents at the top. You don't like press and clean cards. Like, I guess that's a big no-no. And then there is, I think there's creasing somewhere on this card. Now I said, yeah, in the top right corner, I, I don't know if I can get the light to catch that. You can see some lines there in the top corners. There's some denting on this side and then creasing on that side. So you don't press and clean cards. That's how it is. You just send it in like this. So I said, based on my very, very limited knowledge, I've never had a card graded. I said that this would be a two. And when I brought it to them, they estimated that it would be a one. And so there's a little bit of a um, difference in pricing on a one versus a two. Uh, ones would be, let's just say seven, $800. Let's say a two would be over a thousand dollars. And those are just, you know, really rough estimates on pricing. I'm not sure. I'm really hoping that it is the two, but they're the experts. They're the ones who grade cards all the time. I just looked at comps like on eBay to see what it would be. There's some, a little tiny bit of blunting in the corners, as you can see in color loss, but this is the number 62 Jimmy Brown rookie card from 1958. Want to obviously make sure that it's authentic as well, but yeah, there's no slow tape pulls on this one. It's just revealing the grade. Um, the grade's going to be on this side. So Let's see what that says. 1958 tops. Jim Brown. I guess there is going to be a slow tape pull. Is it going to be a one or a two? It is a two. Heck yes. That is freaking awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Now two is a very low grade, but one would I think would say poor. Now this is in good condition, so I'm really happy to have, yeah, I'm really happy to have this in two. This is my very first graded sports card. So that was a good investment for 50 additional dollars on a comic book lot. Got a Jimmy Brown rookie card, probably worth over a thousand dollars. Number 62 in that 1958 tops set. Good two. Yeah, so that's it. You guys hopefully enjoyed the story. Hopefully you enjoyed. I, I was able to do a slow tape pull on a sports card. Now it doesn't mean I'm going to start collecting sports cards. Although I do, I've always loved sports cards. I've got a Mickey Mantle card upstairs. I used to have a lot of Mickey Mantle cards. I, I would like to get like a Hank Aaron, a Willie Mays, Ernie Banks, Roger Maris, Mickey Mantle, Ted Williams. I'd love to get those cards, just like one of each, and but not like be a completist or anything like that or go crazy into sports cards. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, if you're brand new to the channel, hit that subscription button, hit that bell to be notified when there's future videos. Comment down below what you thought of this. Did you think I got a crazy, crazy find on this Jim Brown rookie card? Either way, thank you guys for watching and I'll talk to you on the next one. See ya, bye.